Hi, my name is Monica Gandhi, and I'm going to talk about how COVID-19 severity likely is dose-dependent, or the alternative title to this is just wear a mask. So the outline is we're going to talk about what are the known rates of asymptomatic infection with COVID-19, having no symptoms at all. And what do we know about the relationship between the viral dose that you get in and the severity of disease? And we're going to talk about a theory that's been around for more than 100 years, really, that facial, that uh, viral inoculum determines the severity of disease. And in this case, facial masking would decrease viral inoculum and decrease severity of disease, which is another reason to mask. And then we'll find out if asymptomatic infection has been increasing in places that mask. And in places that mask, like San Francisco, when cases go up, does severe illness go up? And then we'll talk about the end, about the hopeful aspect of asymptomatic infection and immunity. So what is the current rate of asymptomatic COVID-19 infection now? Well, you actually have to do a really well-designed study where you mass test an entire community, then you actually follow them out over time to make sure that they don't get symptoms. And such a study was done um, by Drs. Diane Halvier and Gabe Shamey and Car Karina Marquez here at UCSF that mass tested a whole district in San Francisco and then followed them out for two weeks to make sure they didn't get symptoms. And the rate of truly asymptomatic disease was 42%. And then a narrative review that was recently done in the annals showed the same sort of rate of 40 to 45%. So that's probably where we are in terms of percent of asymptomatic infection with this disease at this point in time. Okay, so what does a mask do? So we knew probably late February, early March of the latest that there was high viral shedding from the nose and mouth even when you didn't have symptoms. Now the epidemiology had suggested something crazy like that was going on even before that, but we got the data of showing that high viral shedding at that time. And so masking guidelines were put out, for example, by the CDC on April 3rd, the WHO took uh, longer to do it, but they put out masking guidelines on June 5th for population level masking. And um, San Francisco, here in San Francisco, we put out guidelines on April 17th and enforced them on May 28th. So this has been a city that's been doing a great job in terms of enforcing population level masking. Now, masks do not filter out all viral particles. Um, it depends on the quality of the mask, but they filter out the majority of viral particles. So N95 masks, can filter out 90 to 95% of viral particles. And depending on the surgical mask and the degree of the cloth fit and all sorts of factors, um, cloth and surgical masks filter out anywhere between 65 and 85% of viral particles. So the query of the day is, does exposure to less virus because you're wearing a mask lead to less severe disease if you get it? So where is the evidence behind this idea that a reduced viral inoculum or dose leads to less severe disease? Well, this is the oldest paper that we can find on it, which is um, from 1938. And this was the concept of the LD50, or the lethal dose of the virus. And the idea here is that this is the viral dose at which 50% of those who are exposed die from the virus. And when I say those, it usually is animal models, and certainly we haven't done these um, at least lethality experiments in humans. Um, and then you uh, can calculate a range of doses that give different severity of disease all the way up to mortality. So what have we done in humans? Well, there have been many animal studies that have verified the relationship between dose and severity of disease in gastrointestinal and respiratory and even sexually transmitted viruses. Um, and then there was a study uh, published in Clinical Infectious Disease in 2015 that looked at giving uh, wild type influenza A to um, human volunteers and uh, giving wild, uh, the, the less of a dose that you gave, the less sick these human volunteers became and a higher dose led to more severe illness, um, more cough, more shortness of breath, et cetera. And then um, this is also an article that I think is important in relevance to influenza, that this was published in Clause 1 um, in uh, 2010. And this was a study about 
how with the influenza pandemic of 1918, 1919, the second wave actually seemed to have a higher mortality than the first wave, which is unusual because usually second waves, because the population is more immune, leads to a lower mortality. But in this case, the study postulated that as we were out and there were people were in war and it was World War I and there was much more overcrowding and, and just um, exposure to, with time, to a higher inoculum of virus, that that led to a higher mortality rate with this higher inoculum of virus. And in fact, that is probably what we were seeing at the beginning of the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic, or COVID-19 uh, pandemic, here in, 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 in with this particular pandemic, because um, healthcare workers, before we knew about masking, were exposed to higher viral doses, and certainly there were more healthcare worker deaths. In Italy and New York, before we knew about um, masking, there was more deaths and a higher mortality rate. And then it was the household contacts that get sick because you're more likely to be exposed to an infectious do dose from someone with whom you're living. So has this been shown with SARS-CoV-2 that you give a higher dose and, and you get more sick? Well, um, has not, it has not and wouldn't be ethical to do that in humans. There has been an animal model of this. Um, these were uh, uh, little hamsters, and um, this is sort of facetious showing the little hamster mask, but actually what they did is took um, hamsters and put them in simulated conditions of masking with a surgical mask partition, and uh, this was published in Clinical Infectious Diseases this year, and it showed um, that the surgical mask partition hamsters were less likely to get COVID-19 if they had a mask. And also those hamsters who did get SARS-CoV-2 were less, were more likely to have mild disease. So also showing this uh, theory of the dose or inoculum effect with mild disease in this model. So if that's the theory and the science behind it, well, have we seen asymptomatic infections increasing under masked circumstances? And in places that mask like San Francisco, for example, have the cases gone up? Do we have lower rates of severe illness than expected? And finally, um, could this be a good thing that we're seeing higher rates of asymptomatic infection if it leads to immunity? Well, a good setting in which to look at this example of um, masking and, and increasing um, mild disease or asymptomatic infection would be in like cruise ships because a cruise ship in general are, though you can't, you know, again, do human experiments, but it's an ecologic, um, model or experiment where in a cruise ship setting, these are closed settings, so people are not coming in and out. So for example, we all know about the um, Diamond Princess cruise ship, which was one of the, which was the first cruise ship outbreak. And this was one of the first estimates of asymptomatic infection that even came about on the Diamond Princess cruise ship that it looked like there was about 18% asymptomatic infection with SARS-CoV-2. And then a later cruise ship um, that was going through Argentina also had an outbreak, but the difference here was that people were allowed to mask. So I don't know if they threw over masks overboard, but they didn't allow them to disembark, but they did give all the passengers surgical masks and all the crew got N95 masks. And yes, um, SARS-CoV-2 in this closed setting did spread. So 128 out of 217 passengers and staff eventually tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 by PCR, but the majority, 81%, were asymptomatic. So 18% without masking, 81% with masking on a closed setting like cruise ships are very suggestive. And then there's been a couple of other um, studies like this in a pediatric hemodialysis unit uh, where all the patients and staff masked. When seroconvergence occurred, all of those people remained asymptomatic and an outbreak in an Oregon seafood plant where employees were handed masks. When the outbreak happened, 95% um, of those um, workers remained asymptomatic. So hopeful news. So do we see also rates of asymptomatic infection increased again in an ecologic study way under mask conditions? Well, it seems true in countries that are compliant with masking. So in countries accustomed to masking, like uh, since the first SARS uh, uh, pandemic, so Hong Kong, Taiwan, Thailand, South Korea, Singapore, Vietnam, um, as the societies opened up with masking, cases did go up but not deaths. And a good example, because um, this was a country that really wasn't accustomed to masking, but the Czech Republic, very early on, on March 23rd, made a decision that their populace would mask. And again, I told you the CDC guidelines came out on April 5th. So the Czech Republic mandated facial masking on March 23rd. Everyone made cloth masks, everyone masked, 
And even as you can see on the right, uh, with the cases going up as opening of society occurred up, even as cases went up, deaths stayed flat. And they've had 352 deaths period and they relaxed their mask restriction on May 11th. So that's a good example of how well things can go. And then finally, I'll point your attention to this model um, that was published that looked at uh, how effective masking is in terms of deaths. So the gray line shows you that if we don't stop the lockdown but continue social distancing, we'll still get deaths. Um, but these lines on the bottom show that with 50% masking compliance, we may get some more deaths. But with 80% masking compliance, which you can see is the red line, even after lifting of lockdowns, the death rate can remain flat. And that is what's happening in San Francisco so far, at least. We're lucky, but that seems to be what's happening um, in San Francisco, despite cases going up, that the death rate has been flat. And I'll explain that on the next slide. So what about here in San Francisco? We test a lot. We're probably 80% compliant with masking. I, I think we are. It's a very compliant population, and uh, the city has done a great job in enforcing this. Asymptomatic infections are up and the death rate is flat. This was a New York Times article uh, about a Bay Area health technology company whose labs are processing COVID-19 tests and out of 30,000 people tested for the virus, the majority of those in our city or in our area here had mild or no symptoms. And then if you look at our San Francisco data tracker that's updated every day at 9 a.m., even though there have been cases going up with opening of society a little bit more, we're into the early phase two, um, our death rate has remained flat. So we have been at 50 deaths since June 27th, and that's 900 cases later. In terms of hospitalizations in San Francisco, though hospitalizations have gone up a bit, some of those are uh, uh, actually because we've been mass testing like many hospitals do, all inpatients are tested upon admission. So some of those hospitalization rates going up is because these are people coming in for other conditions but they're, and they're asymptomatic with COVID-19, but they're counted in the hospitalization rate. Also, we've had transfers from San Quentin and tragic outbreaks um, that are uh, elsewhere um, coming into the Panassas campus. The good news is if you look at the public hospital and the data over here on the right, um, this is where the hospital I work at, San Francisco General, our lengths of stay over the last four months, even of hospitalizations, have been decreasing. And you can see the second plot down, the percentage with ICU hospitalizations have been decreasing from March to June. And it seems like even the hospitalizations are less severe, um, and that doesn't seem to be related to the age of the patients, which has been brought up in other contexts that are we less sick because younger people are being hospitalized. Um, at least in our setting, March, April, May, June, the age was the same, but we had uh, less severe outcomes, hospitalizations. So is asymptomatic infection horrible? In one case, yes, because uh, this is a virus that is quite unique and that there is massive amounts of asymptomatic spread. That we cannot deny. That's why masking is so important. However, the hopeful thing about asymptomatic infection is that, um, and let's, let's, you know, we've, a lot has been made of antibodies and B cells, but T cell responses are really the response that we want to look at. We don't have enough data here about T cell responses with asymptomatic infection and if they're different than with symptomatic infection, but it is very hopeful and I think this is the most hopeful aspect, is that we've been into this pandemic now for eight months, really. We started at the beginning of November and counting. And we have not had a single convincing case of reinfection. I think that is the most hopeful sign that immunity occurs to SARS-CoV-2. Also, there's some articles that I refer you to here that is showing um, this hopeful news, again, that T cells are activated even with mild disease um, in patients with SARS-CoV-2. So in conclusion, Masking may have more than one advantage. This is not a political thing. Masking will get us through the pandemic sooner, so let's mask. Um, it may mean that during isolation at home that the isolated person should wear a mask, but so should the people around them, the people who are quarantining around them at home um, to prevent any transmission. The theory here is from an old concept, 1938, of the LD50, the lethal dose of the virus. Less viral inoculum leads to less severe disease. Masks lead to less viral inoculum. It's hopeful, but we have to wear our masks. Places that don't mask as well as San Francisco, and I would like to commend the San Francisco DPH um, and UCSF and policymakers around here, 
we mask well here, but places that don't mask as well may have increasing death rates with increasing cases. And masking, if it's as effective as lockdown, at least so true in one model, may have be the way for us to get more quickly through the pandemic um, and with less pain in terms of lockdown. U.S. may become a natural experiment with one, con one state not doing well and one state doing better, one city not doing well, one city doing better, and that all could be related to masking. So let's mask up, it's not political, make it happen, we'll get through this painful time faster. Thank you, this has been Monica again.